Is this weed stressing you out too? If so, we're gonna figure out today how to treat it. Okay, these are the two products that we're gonna look at today in treating chamber bitter. I've used 2,4-D in the past and, I, and it's worked really well. What I wanna do though, is try to put down the Celsius product. You can use it in 95 degree weather, which is awesome. That might be a really good option for me right now because if you look at the 10 day forecast, we got some hot weather coming. It's gonna be near 100 over the weekend. And yeah, we definitely don't wanna be putting in some really negative applications on post-emergence in that kind of weather. Let's see how well this Celsius product does. Okay, as you can see, it comes in a very small packet. I'm going to use a small amount because what I wanna do is spot treat today. I don't wanna spray the entire yard with this. So I'm gonna use the low application rate. Again, always read the label. So it says right here that on the low application rate per 1,000 square feet, we're gonna use 1.6 grams. I've got a scale right here where I can measure that out because it's such a small amount. 10 milliliters, so I'm gonna have to guess at this. 10 milliliters is registering at three grams on this. So if I just half that, should be good. Okay, so I'm gonna put some glasses on and I'm gonna, I'm gonna sprinkle about half of this. All right, so we've got half of that. We're gonna add a little bit of this is green laser, not to be confused with blue laser. Just enough to get it a little blue color so I can see where I sprayed. And we're gonna add the water. Okay, let's start spraying. Instead of trying to just lightly broadcast it over the entire lawn. I'm just spot treating it. I thought it would be a good time to mention that you may want to put this product down or any post-emergent for that matter. You want to put them down in dry conditions. If there's rain in the forecast, you may want to hold off on the application. Look what I found. That's about, I know it's probably hard to tell, but it's about six inches tall. Let's get a closer look at this. You can see up under these, oh man, they should have seeds there, but they've all broken off. You can see where they've broken off. Wow. I'm glad that this is over here. They're all broken off. Wow. Okay. So there we go. You see those little seedlings that are under the leaf? Yep. That means that this thing is spreading. I'm going to spray this nice and heavy right over here. While I'm going along through the grass here, you can see that I'm only spraying a little bit on these weeds. It really doesn't take that much product to put down on the weeds to do its job. So make sure you don't overspray. Just a little squirt at a time will do. Okay, we're back. So I wanna talk about pre-emergent. Pre-emergent is super important to try to take care of these weeds so that you don't have to deal with them after the fact. We really don't wanna to have to be putting down anything negative in our lawn like I'm, like I'm having to do today. The problem with chamber bitter is you can barely find any pre-emergence that will handle this particular weed. However, I did find one. So I'm going to make sure that I put that down next year prior to it starting to sprout out. I want to make sure that we take care of it at the root level and not have to treat it all the time after the fact. Okay. While I'm taking the time to exterminate every single little weed out there, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about things that will be helpful for the next time that you have to do a treatment on your lawn like this. First, you want to be careful not to put any applications down too frequently, even if you're doing it at the lowest rate. You want to make sure that you're going to allow a post-emergent application one or two days before you mow. So you want to make sure that the post-emergent applications are based around your mowing schedule. A couple weeks ago, I had put down some 2,4-D, which is a post-emergent killer for chamber bitter. I noticed that it had done pretty good at taking out some of the really bad patches of weeds in my lawn. The application that I did at the time was a little bit of a different style application. I used the lowest rate that was recommended as well, just like it did this time. I did a broadcast spray over the entire yard and luckily we had good weather for it. On that day, it was 85 degrees and it's good to know that the application was effective at that low rate and it didn't damage the lawn. Since most of the weeds are up near the house, I didn't do as much spot spraying in other areas because there was really no need in putting additional stress down on the grass 
when there's no weeds in that location. As I was walking through the yard, I noticed here and there that there was some nut sedge. I'm not gonna put this herbicide down against nut sedge because it's a grassy weed, and this is a broadleaf killer. It's gonna have little or no effect on it. You wanna make sure that you're putting down a product that's related to killing that specific weed. All right, I think that's gonna do it for the day. 